So there's an interesting thing about series. If we know that a series is convergent, what we can actually do is we can split it up into a finite number of terms and then all the other terms as we go out to infinity. Why is this important? Well, if I take this in sort of a real world example, I can't sum up an infinite number of terms. That's not possible, in, in much less in practice, you know, right? Anyway, the idea is I can only go so far. So maybe I want to sum up the first 10,000 or 100,000 terms. I can take that piece and then this piece over here can, still contributes to the convergence of the series, but after a certain number of points, it kind of just goes away because if it converges, it can't be adding too much because if it were, it would add up to infinity. So what's kind of important when we think about series is, is really this term. This is really the most important term. Even though when we're calculating it, this is kind of the, the value we keep. The reason that I say this is the most important term is because if this thing doesn't shrink away to zero, then this thing doesn't converge. So it's important to examine this. You may want the value of this, in, again, in like a real world scenario, but this thing can't, can't shoot off to infinity. So what's neat is I can split it up. I can say, look, I'm gonna take the first 10,000 terms and then everything afterwards, you take that piece, all right? So why is this important? What we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the fact that we know that to something else that we're very familiar with, a geometric series. So when we think about a geometric series, if it's a convergent geometric series, it has this form, AR to the N, and then we know that that R value, that I call it a radius, it's really kind of not, but that R value is less than one, the magnitude is less than one. Now this is very confusing terminology, but a lot of, this is very common, so I'm gonna keep using it. The, the sequence term here is some a, which is a fixed value times r to the n. So the sequ this sequence term is this, and then this next term in the sequence is, is that value with r to the n plus 1. Well, what we're doing is we say, okay, those are the first two terms. So what does the ratio of those terms look like? If I take the next term divided by the current term, so if I'm at n and I look at the ratio of the next term to the current term, and I plug that in, what I actually get is r. And I know for a fact that r is less than one because it's a convergent geometric series. That's super important because it tells me that for a geometric series, it's true for the short term, but specifically for the long term behavior, each, the ratio of each successive term is less than one, has to be, by definition. Now there's an also a very interesting relationship to this nth root. So if I didn't have an a, this would be kind of trivial. The nth root of something to the n would just be the thing, right? But if I take the nth root, again, this is of absolute value. I haven't talked a little bit about that yet. But I take the nth root here and I plug it in. I then can split the root to each term. Absolute value of a, that fixed value a to the n, and then absolute value of r to the n the nth root of that. Well, those are inverses, so they have that cancellation property. So you just get that absolute value of r. And then you have this magnitude of a to the one over n. And I just wrote it that way to, because it's gonna make our lives a little easier. So if we take a look at this, we say, okay, for any, for this sequence here, let's, let's think of a geometric sequence here. If I have this geometric sequence and then this piece, if I take n all the way up to infinity, if I start looking at terms as they go to infinity, well, that's just gonna become zero, a to the zero, because one over n goes to zero. So then it becomes that magnitude of r, which is less than one. Why is this important? Well, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to say, okay, what does it mean to look like a geometric series long-term? What does it mean to, if, if I have some series that I'm looking at, it could be any series, if I can show that it looks kind of like a geometric series very long term, again, think, think here, not here, because at the beginning it could be all over the place. But long term, this, if it looks and behaves like a geometric series, if I can look at this ratio that I'm looking at for a geometric series, and get the same kind of results that I get for a geometric series. So if I look at this ratio or I look at that nth root and say, 
well, long term, it behaves just like a geometric series, then I know it's going to converge because I know geometric series is always converge. They absolutely converge, in fact. So this sets up the idea of what we call the ratio test and the root test. The ratio test says for any series, doesn't matter, any series you pick, if I take the, the limit of the ratio of those terms as times goes on, if I get that the limit, the limit, not, not at the beginning, not in general, but the limit of the ratio of those terms ends up less than one. And what tells me is, oh, that means it kind of looks like a geometric series long term. Long term, that ratio is less than one. Long term, that ratio is less than one. Okay. So that tells me it's going to converge absolutely. Well, we also know something else about geometric series, which is that if the rate, if that R value is greater than one, it will diverge. We also know that when R is equal to one, it diverges. But we, we can't really use that here because the way that the limit process works, it, ha it doesn't, when R is equal to one, it's a fixed value. It doesn't get to one, it is one. So, in that particular case, it'll converge absolutely if it looks like a geometric series with less than one. It will diverge if it looks like a geometric series with that value greater than one. But if it's equal to one, it's just kind of inconclusive. And there are really good examples of, of series that, that both diverge or converge or absolutely converge when this is equal to one. Think like one over n, the harmonic series. If you take this limit, uh, the limit for the harmonic series, you're going to get 1, but you know it diverges. But if it's 1 over n squared, that's a p series with p equal 2 that converges, but still this limit would be equal to 1. So the ratio test is a nice test, but it doesn't always work for you. The root test, I, I find myself not using the root test very often, but it is a very powerful tool when you, when you need it. But it's got the same idea. It says, look, if it look, if it has the same behavior as a geometric series long term, it converges absolutely just like a geometric series. If it is greater than one, again, like a if it resembles a geometric series, but it resembles the kind that diverges, it also diverges. But if it's equal to one, the test is inconclusive. And this is kind of frustrating because when you're evaluating series, you might say, ah, oh, well, I'll try this. Ah, it's inconclusive. Try this. Ah, it's inconclusive. And you may have to fall back to more nuanced techniques, direct comparison test, or maybe even integral test if you can do it. But these are really nice techniques. And, and this is just a summation that says, you know, we're trying to figure out if it resembles a geometric series. And we're going to do some examples and hopefully solidify this. And this is a really handy dandy chart. But I wanted to emphasize for the most part that this is really related to the fact it's related to this, this piece, and we're trying to see whether or not this piece here resembles a geometric series.